and it's steeped in motorsport history. Since 1905, they've been running speed trials here. And much the same as it was then, the spirit remains the same. All sorts of people in all sorts of cars and motorcycles racing down the seafront. event still in the British motorsports calendar and in one way it's the purest a standing start half mile straight sprint against the clock a hill climb without the challenge of gradient or bends David Render has been taking part regularly since the war when you look at the number of people that there are up here thousands of them it's very gratifying to think that our sport is commanding that sort of interest you realize we're right at the bottom end but we consider that we spawn a lot of young chaps who go on to be Grand Prix drivers. Sterling Moss was a sprinter and a hill climber in his early days in his early days. Indeed, some of the entries date back to those early years. Ken Neve, ex SCC president, built it just after the war, uh, using a 1922 GN chassis and two uh, 939 aerial square four motorbike engines. Does it go? When it's going, it goes. But uh, it's getting it all going at the same time, that's the trouble. Um, it's 1936, uh, Bendy. That's 440 metre. It belongs to my dad. It's exciting. <laughs> well, I should do it once, it's 50 below, so I'm doing it again and again. And you sort of lose all the fear you've got of going past. It's all over in 20 seconds. Yeah, I know, but you don't forget it. <laughs> it's a uh, Rolls Royce built Bentley. It was in 1935. And the engine is a Rolls Royce Phantom 3, 12 cylinder. Why is it worth spending all this effort just for 22 seconds of excitement? Um, it's a job to put into a couple of words. There's a certain friendship and camaraderie in the paddock, really. I think everybody just comes out and squirts their cars. There's a reason for being here. <laughs> One of the attractions of an event like Brighton is that you can compete using your ordinary road bike or car without the need for roll cages and firewalls. The original Brighton Speed Trial was all about timing a car over a set distance. In a way, it was the forerunner of the modern 0 to 60 seconds, which all manufacturers use as their benchmarks these days. So we thought we'd come here, bring three of the latest sports cars and uh, see how we got on. We were only allowed to enter two in competitions. Those two, the latest Lotus Esprit and the TVR 450 SE. Both cars claim to do 0 to 6 in about 4.7. We're going to race them. Also, demonstration runs the very latest 911 from Porsche, the Carrera 4. We'll see how that fares. The new 3.6-litre engine in the Carrera 4 puts out 250 horsepower. But the problem with four-wheel drive is not avoiding wheel spin, but clutch slip. A best time of 22.34 seconds and 122 miles an hour across the line. The two-wheel drive lightweights were obviously going to be quicker, but harder to get off the line. The TVR boasted the most power, 320 horsepower from the 4.5-litre V8. The limited slip differential helped the traction, but too few revs bogged one run and too many sport the other. Still, a best of 21.17 seconds and a speed of 128 miles an hour. If the TVR is brute force, the Lotus is high-tech sophistication. Only 2.2 litres to produce 264 horsepower. That's 70% more power per litre than the other two, and, like the Porsche, running on unleaded fuel. But with no limited slip differential, it was too easy to get a lot of wheel spin, and the best of 21.31 seconds was just shy of the TVR, even though it was two miles an hour faster across the line. The quickest cars are all conventional modern racing cars, but don't tell James and Sue Tiller. This is a 1950 J2 Allard, which my wife and I have owned for 30 years, and we've over the years made it go quicker and quicker, We've got a rather large high-powered engine in there at the moment, 560 horsepower, and we're hoping to do 160 miles an hour in about three minutes' time. It's just so friendly and enjoyable, and it's a good experience. Dangerous? Very. <laughs> Everyone accepts there's an element of risk involved in motorsport, even in a relaxed and informal meeting like Brighton. 
suddenly the atmosphere can change. Just lost it on the bumps after the finish line. It's everything. <laughs> Took about 100 feet of fence out, went across in the other side. You were okay? Oh yeah, I got a grazed elbow and I shall have uh, seat belts marks for a few days, but we're okay. Adrian Moores comprehensively rearranged his March 792, but was well protected himself. For the bikers, no such protection is available, as John Rich sadly found out in the afternoon. Crossing the finishing line on his 1300cc Kawasaki at around 140 miles an hour, he lost control, fell off and was severely concussed. Weeks later, he was still in a coma. His colleagues courageously continued, but the stoppage meant no second runs for bikes or cars, and hence no chance for Clive Bracey to defend his outright record. A broken clutch couldn't be repaired in time on the Vibra Mark II, and it meant Paul Edwards was favourite for the runoffs. This run by Paul's 4-litre Pillbeam MP58 was the fastest ever seen. 14.97 seconds at a terminal speed of 182 miles an hour. Paul Edwards, fantastic. A, a very undramatic start in a way. No wheels spin, shot off the line, new course record. How does that feel? Well, I've been after it for about four years now. Uh, it's very nice to beat Clive Bracey, but unfortunately he can't run with us because I'm, I'm sure he'll be there or thereabouts. Tiffany Dell there reporting from... <laughs>